So let us start our seminar, and uh, I will begin uh, with the explanation of the following phenomena. It is possible to define uh, two-dimensional conformal quantum field theory without having functional integral. You need to use only finite uh, dimensional integrals. That's important. So having this definition, such treatment of, uh, of quantum field theory is rigorous. And uh, there is a definition that's possible to compute, proof theorem, etc. So <clears throat> let me review the idea how to do this. Well, some, some people would say that in any number of dimensions, you don't need functional integral to define conformal field theory. You just need OPE, right? Ah, here there will be no OPE. No OPE. No Hilbert spaces. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's very different approach. Mm -hmm. And this approach uh, we developed with uh, Nikrasov and Frankel in the set of papers like 10 plus years ago. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, uh, we went to the wrong direction. So after uh, describing uh, the models in dimension one, two, and four, we decided to go towards the bosonic model, model without fermions. And there we stuck. And that's why we lost momentum. Mm -hmm. So instead, we had to do other things in models with fermions. Okay. Still, let me recall what is going on. And I will recall it using the real, the really interesting case, namely the sigma model. In instantonic limit, in instantonic limit. So, let me recall that uh, we have the main equation, equation of holomorphicity. And uh, here sigma goes to target x. And uh, we would like to understand the correlators as a finite dimensional integrals over the space of solutions to such equation. In particular, I'm sorry. So I'm writing this uh, in, an, in a bit naive way.
So this is the action. So when epsilon is going to zero, the integral localizes to holomorphic maps. And epsilon is smoothening of what's going on. So we have instantons. So it is uh, the set of spaces. Let me call them M instanton M. And this is multi index space of holomorphic maps of sigma to target X with a logical charge M. So it is a vector. As you know, uh, the topological charge. Uh, belongs to second cohomology. So, correlator is defined. What, what is the last term in the action? Because it's... Uh, I can't see it. So the last term is proportional to derivative of metric. I don't want, it's, it's possible ah, to write okay. it down explicitly. Okay. I just don't want to go into this. So the topological charge is something like the degree of the map if X yes, is... Exactly, exactly mm -hmm. the degree of the map. Mm -hmm. so, so what to do? We have to do the following. We have to take a sum so it's all, all blah, what is blah? All something of Z1? Yeah, yes. So this is observable. I, I'll, I'll define it in a moment. Okay, I just don't see the subscript. Uh -huh. Are given omega 1. Ah, omega, okay. Omega k that belong to differential forms on X and also points. Mm -hmm. Z1, Z, Zk, we might define a number. So here we sum over integral of M I N. And people used to say this q to the integer vector m. So it's kind of a standard thing. So what to integrate? If you have a map, there is an evaluation map. We can evaluate f at the point z i. Right? Mm -hmm. And this belongs to X. So there is an evaluation map. Then here we can take the pullback of evaluation Z1 inverse image. Applied to omega one of H evaluation ZK inverse image F omega K. And we integrate. Is, is it clear what is going on? So you're integrating over what, what is it? M N and what is the subscript? I don't see. Space of holomorphic maps. So ah. I am fixing differential forms. I am fixing uh, okay. points. Mm -hmm. So then evaluation depends. It is a 
is a map from holomorphic map to X, right? Mm -hmm. Given a holomorphic map, you can evaluate it at Z1. Mm -hmm. Then you can uh, take a pullback and integrate. So, and uh, what is Q if there's no H bar? Okay, Q, uh, Q is a degree counting parameter. Mm -hmm. Would you have just uh, one dimensional H2? Q would be, Q measures the topology of the map, instantonic number. Mm -hmm. So I wrote it in a standard way. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, actually you have uh, not a topological number, but actually an integer vector. Mm -hmm. So people say Q to the N, Q1 times N1, et cetera, or something like this. QK and K. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a standard, uh, notation here but uh, mm -hmm. so we have this so why it is interesting it is interesting for many reasons in this way Sorry, uh, it, pro probably uh, writing f in parentheses is a bit confusing uh, right mm -hmm. just maybe maybe like this so it takes so evolution takes f to x yes yes no the last one was correct uh, uh, ah okay so it's interesting that here already case n equals to zero is reasonable. In this case, we have constant maps and uh, we have just ordinary multiplication of differential forms. But we would like to have two interesting modifications here. The first modification is uh, include non-trivial topology. And uh, here we would like uh, to study not only closed omegas. It would be interesting to study any omegas. Mm -hmm. So first, study non-closed omegas, like functions. And we did it, and we found uh, that there are interesting results. Mm -hmm. Now, having this, we can have the OPE. We can study what happens when we take points, Z1, Zk, and put two points together. It's an interesting limit. It's very non-trivial. Let me try to explain why it's non trivial. Naively, when you take Z1 to Z2, to, to Z2 you still have a uh, small size instanton that is in between. What does it mean? Just imagine that you have something like this omega 1. Omega 2 of X, Psi, Psi, Bar. Mm -hmm. Let us take Z1 to Z2. Mm -hmm. Naively, one would expect that when a lot of fermions are sitting in the same place, we would get zero. Mm -hmm. 
<coughs> yes. However, however, it's not like this because uh, we can still have an instanton, and instanton has something like a size that sits in between. While the one goes to the two, you will always find a small instanton in between. And it's, it's an interesting phenomenon. Let me give an example. So that, that's like the step function in this 1D example. Mm -hmm. It is not like a step function. Let me, well, let me try to give an example. So suppose you have uh, one instant of something very simple. X of Z is C constant, Z minus A, Z minus B. And then we have, and then we have so-called size of the instanton. Size of the instanton is a region where instanton is not a constant. Mm -hmm. So there is point A, point B, and roughly speaking, this is the size of the instanton. When A A B are close together, everything is around these two points. So suppose that you have two observation points, Z1 and Z2. Okay. Mm -hmm. You try to tell them Z1 to Z2. However, you can always find two points A and B that are roughly speaking in between. And so uh, this map is non-trivial. Mm, say again, say again, what, what, what? So what I, I'm trying to say mm -hmm. that when you have, when you take Z1 to Z2, mm -hmm. you try to turn Z1 to Z2 and uh, Naively, you would, you would think that uh, uh, differential forms would be multiplied. Mm -hmm. Because here we have x of z1, here we have x of z2, okay? Mm -hmm. When z1 goes to z2, it looks naively as uh, a original product of differential forms. Mm -hmm. However, it's not that, e it's not like this, mm -hmm. because when z1 goes to z2 for any fixed z1 and z2, you can always find an instant of such that x of z1 is very different from x of z2. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you turn one z1 to z2, mm -hmm. and uh, however values, yes, there are always map maps uh, that have very different values. Mm -hmm. So while you are tending z1 to z2, you actually see non-trivial contributions from instantons that become smaller and smaller. So when you write down this um, in this uh, solution x of z, so it has a pole somewhere, well, and yes, a zero and a zero one. somewhere. So, so here, uh, here is just CP1 to CP1 instanton mm -hmm. number one. Okay. Okay, so it's CP1 to CP1, so you don't care about the pole. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. So uh, so what I'd like to say is it's very interesting phenomenon because mm -hmm. of the instanton can, can have sizes arbitrarily small. Mm -hmm. You still have non-trivial contribution. And it's interesting to compute the deformation of the RAM ring. Nobody did it. Mm -hmm. The RAM ring is not the ring of cohomology. It's an infinite dimensional ring, ring of functions and differential forms. So what we did with uh, Frenkel and uh, Nikrasov, we studied in detail uh, one dimensional case. Mm -hmm. uh, and with two dimensional case, we were a bit sloppy. 
So, and uh, it was now a methodological mistake. We were able to write down the, the, the quantum drum ring. A ring is it's much better. It's, it's much more interesting than cohomology. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, so here, these observables, the uh, correlators you define kind of like in Gromov Witten theory, but except that omegas are not necessarily closed. Yes, and this and this is really and it yes, exactly. You do not need can to write down everything. You do not need the condition of being closed. So this is ordinary sigma model, not twisted. No, no nothing. Just yeah, just... actually, it's twisted. twisted. Of course, it's not. So, it's not just. Uh, Supersymmetric, of course, it's twisted because uh, it's it's a twisted. You see, this is one form. This is one form. These are scalars. <laughs> it is uh, called a twisted sigma model. Uh, but uh, then, supersymmetric n equals to a twisted, of course. Mm. But I would like to uh, to have another perspective on this model. It's just delta function. So, but you don't look at the cohomology of uh, Q? Or do you? Uh, intuit of, course, of, course there, of course there is Q. But uh, for me, Q is just uh, an operator vector field. The reason I'm asking, so in, in A model, Q closed observables correspond to closed uh, forms. On the exactly. You are right. Q closed observables corresponds to closed forms, but uh, it's not our intention at the moment. Our intention is to find out the theory. So actually, no. if you have a, a sigma model, it's better to construct all observables. There are a lot of observables in sigma model. At least there are all omega observables. For any omega, you have such observable. Mm -hmm. And you can uh, consider quantum multiplication. OK, so you don't pass to Q cohomology. No. So it's not A model, really, then? Ah, it, 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 it's a question of what you call A model. So uh, it is, uh, so by A model, OK. By A model, I mean the following thing. First step, make a twist. And we did it because we have a different choice of fermions, of, uh, of spins of fermions. Do this. But then the second question, what to study? We prefer to study all uh, correlators of all observables. We'd like to treat it as a full-fledged quantum uh, field theory. So we, we like to have a lot of observables. Yeah. Like uh, just imagine the, uh, would it be free theory? So observables, there'll be observable functions of X. Good observables, like, it's interesting to study it. Moreover, you can take derivatives with respect to Z. And then you will have not only omegas, but also their derivatives. Mm -hmm. So we actually have what we would like to have a lot of observables. Uh, and, um, but this, but this is only first piece of data. You see, you see, I put it, uh, number one here. Mm -hmm. It is interesting to study. Nobody knows it. People somehow missed missed it. Uh, uh, let me tell you why it happened. Okay, it is because people uh, made it an opposite way. So first they started sigma model. Then they say, let us make a twist. We have scalar Q, and then we say, they say, let us study Q cohomology. Mm -hmm. And here idea, no, everything is okay. We just study everything, not only Q-cohomology. Everything. So when you 
when you do do the traditional thing and do the cubic homology, then there are no OPs, right? Uh, the, uh, in some sense, there is an OPE, of course. So the, there is a famous OPE in CP1 sigma module. Omega, okay, so O omega Z1, O omega Z2 goes U plus something. So all of, so OP is like, regular. 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 Regular, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's okay. <laughs> I, mean, I meant no yes, but see, it's uh, You see, so, so this something is Q exact. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but there is something. It's a something. All well, right, I mean, no, no explosions. No, 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 no nothing explodes, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is instantonic limit? Instantonic limit is limit epsilon going to zero. Oh. And, uh, and uh, you, of course, could see that epsilon equals to alpha prime in string theory notation. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same thing. So, uh, you see, as a theory is defined, so idea is the following. Theory is defined as at alpha prime equal to zero. Theory is defined. And then you can have uh, one over, and then you can have alpha prime expansion, if you wish. It's also a piece of definition of the theory. But in order to do this, we need to know, we, we need to have an example an, an observables containing like range multipliers. And here I am coming to the issue number two. So can I ask something? So maybe something stupid. So if we are, if we don't insist on observables being Q closed, then probably doesn't matter whether we do twist or, or we don't do the twist. Why? Uh, well, because it, it's it, 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 at it least matters. I have not space. Hmm? It, it matters because because if you don't do twist, uh, you have observables. So without doing twist, this psi have uh, spins one half. Sure. Is it a problem? And uh, it's better to and uh, if you have these two things having spins one half and you glue them, hmm? well, it, it's not nice. It's not natural. Um, no, I, I just wanted to say that uh, then probably somehow the Q, I don't know. then maybe if we don't restrict ourselves to Q observables, uh, Q closed observables, then maybe all observables in A twist should be sort of in correspondence with all observables in, in the B twist. Well, I would say maybe, however, uh, for me, a twist is very important because a twist gives a definition. So you do an a twist, take mm -hmm. epsilon to zero, and you get a, a, a good definition of quantum field theory. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's the idea mm -hmm. to define things beyond cohomology. Yes, and uh, but you see. When I wrote this point one, I have observables that are functions of what? Of X and Psi. Mm -hmm. But it's roughly speaking half of observables. Mm -hmm. So these are functions of so-called coordinates mm -hmm. because X and Psi are coordinates. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it would be very interesting. And, it, and I think it is the crucial thing that we invented is the possibility to define correlators of so-called Lagrange multiplier or momenta. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, let me recall it because it is uh, quite simple. Idea is quite simple. Suppose you would like to have a P field at point Y. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
if you put here p at point y, mm -hmm. you just uh, what do what do you do? You you are just deforming uh, equation. So I call it lambda deformation. So here we have d bar x equal to zero. Mm -hmm. If you add this term to the action, it is d bar x equals uh, lambda times delta function at y. Mm -hmm. Still, the instantonic space uh, is finite dimensional. But it has more parameters and uh, And uh, I explained last time how to do it in quantum mechanics. So this instanton that you have written below uh, on the board, it's actually a solution of this equation, right? No, this instanton it is, has a, is no lambda. Yeah. But del bar of it, it has a delta function at B. It's, it's not because uh, you need to consider proper del bar. Mm -hmm. Because okay. You, okay, okay, yes, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so uh, in one dimensional case, in one dimensional case, we were enjoying the following problem. So we had trajectory with the vector field V then we have trajectory following vector field u and then we continue with v so here we have modified trajectories in in d equals one case mm -hmm. and we could uh, similar uh, similarly evaluate things on this trajectory and take derivative with respect to lambda, and we get an observable corresponding to the vector field u. Okay, but this one dimensional uh, is a toy model. We are not that interested in one dimensional theory. Mm -hmm. It's just a toy model. It's much, it's better to study two dimensional theories. And the two dimensional theory, we would like to write the following equation. So holomorphicity up to the vector field u. And here is like delta function z minus y. So this delta function should be one zero four. Mm -hmm. And we want this to be zero, and we put here lambda. So this is lambda deformed instanton. Uh, one zero or zero one? I think zero. Probably zero. Sorry, sorry, zero one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Zero one. So this is lambda deformed instanton. Okay. The question is how to write it down. It's not that hard. By the way, you see, u depends on x. You need to solve this differential equation. So in this, in, in say, instantonic number, number zero, xi is just something like z minus y lambda ui of x. You see constant plus, plus something. So lambda is small, that's why this makes sense. Mm -hmm. And later on, we take derivative with respect to lambda. Yeah. 
It is interesting to study this in the instantonic number greater than zero. You'll get something. Why is that zero? Why is uh... yeah? Why do you call oh, it four? Zero? Four instantonic number zero looks like this. Uh, it's an example. Yeah, so, so what makes it instantonic number zero? Uh... Instantonic number zero means that when lambda equals to zero, it's constant. Ah. Uh, okay. So it's actually, this is already a meromorphic function. So what is interesting? What's, so uh, and sim, uh, there are similar things for instantonic number different from zero. Of course, we can deform equation. It's not a big deal. And then you may compute, and here you get new correlator. Let me put it like this. I call it O tilde. U is a vector field at point Y. And it is derivative of a lambda of this integral. And here it's the moduli space depends on lambda and of course you. You see this space becomes different and we take derivative like here. And this is a definition. And already, already from this zero instant on number consideration, you see that we have uh, these OPE terms. Here we have OPE between uh, momenta and coordinate, mm -hmm. as we expect. However, we, we have it without uh, this uh, Fox space, Hilbert space, you know. We, we just derive it. When we do not postulate it, we derive it. In particular, for the CP1 model, you may check that there is uh, a Cass Moody algebra. So there are three holomorphic vector fields and they form a Cass Moody algebra with zero central extension because of supersymmetry. You may not call them Caps Moody because it's, uh, but Carroll tells you. What, what, what was this O tilde again? The, the extra insertion? O tilde is an observable corresponding to the vector field U placed at the point Y. Mm -hmm. You may check that this observable is Q exact. But uh, we don't care that it is Q exact or not Q exact. It's interesting observable. And this should correspond to der to derivations of the quam of the cohomology ring. Okay? So what is it that you are getting for the for the CP1 model? What I'm getting? Mm -hmm. uh, so in the instantonic uh, number zero, I am getting uh, just uh, current algebra. So, so CP1 model means that the, that the source is CP1. Yeah, the, the tar target CP1. The target is CP1. Okay. And the source is 
anything any service. anything of course anything. Anything. okay anything okay. and mm -hmm. it's interesting that i have this uh, this current of uh, central uh, okay the, the, they have zero centrally they are zero centrally extended so it's interesting that i can get this current So it, 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 it's and it's an exercise. You check. Sorry, can you write O tilde? Uh... Of course, mm. O tilde of y is this, but maybe you you prefer to write it in, in terms of fields, right? Um, definition. The infratonic... think, what, like definition of either side. Either left or right side of equation. So so far. Okay. I, I... Okay. So so uh, so so left side. So this is uh, this is the definition uh, of the O tilde, correlator of O tilde. In the right side is more more or less clear. Well, the, in the right on the right you have new M. So I new don't M. Know. Yes, new M. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, and this M, roughly speaking, always exists. So it's uh, it's not a big deal. Suppose you have a vector field. You are just uh, doing like this. Okay, so but the, this is uh, you added some observable to the action. Right? Yes, and uh, and if you would like to understand it in terms of observables, it would be the following: in terms of observables, it is P i P j U j of x plus pi i d u j over d x pi, sorry pi j x k psi k okay so o tilde of u at y is this So if I still would like to understand it in terms of functional integral, I would better write it this way. And uh, for the instantonic number zero, you may compute uh, correlator very easily. And you'll find that O tilde U one of Y O tilde of y u2, y1, y2 goes y1 minus y2 O tilde and here we have the bracket u1, u2. Plus regular terms. So that's what I call Kasmudi. Uh, Mm. So bracket is uh, just the bracket of vector fields. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the case of CP1 model, everything is very explicit. You have here uh, u constant, u x, and u x square. So the, the, these are our uh, famous uh, vector fields on CP1 target. Uh, you can generalize. So what is interesting here is that this is that this comes as the instantonic number uh, zero, and if you ask me what happens for the instantonic number one, I would say sorry guys, we were stupid with uh, Frankel and Nikrasov, and we forgot to compute it. So, so this is uh, the same you get in the kind of curved beta gamma system. What is it the same that you would get in the I think curved beta gamma system? Yes, but uh, so called curved, you are right. So called curved beta gamma system is purely bosonic. Yes, and, and here you here... also have BC beta gamma yes. and BC. Yes, and here it's called uh, beta gamma plus BC. Mm -hmm. So, what is important here is if you have both beta gamma and BC, 
you can uh, you have no problems. So it's if you take Tokoma two CP CP one model and consider uh, holomorphic twist like, like this Q Q bar cohomology and you get some vertex algebra and that's the the cut smooth you think. Yeah. Yes. But then you also have some fermionic currents in the algebra now. Of course. So <coughs> so this is U field and uh, it is for, it is this is observable corresponding to the vector field. And there is also observable corresponding to contraction with the vector field. Mm -hmm. So this is like differentiation. I always forget, I, I always forgot how to define the pi field, but it is possible to do it. So basically you need, so in this way you have P field, yes? So PU is an invariant way to say that you have a P field. So when you say P, yes, you actually mean, you actually mean vector field. If you have a free model, it is C and uh, P corresponds to the constant vector field. But in general, you just do not need to consider uh, a free theory. So the very beauty from my point of view of this is that, is that you can forget, you can forget about free fields. See, the idea is forget about free fields, forget about coordinates. Everything is purely geometric. When you have CP1 as a source, CP1 as a target, you do not, do not have free fields. You can play with free fields, but original definition does not contain free fields. So suppose you have CP1 as a target. You can consider it as a C star compactified. In this case, and we will also discuss this uh, concerning mirror symmetry. In this case, you have the linear structure, structure coming from C star. But uh, main thing that it is not needed. In this definition, you do not need to have it. However, there are subtleties. So for CP, uh, for CP1, so for CP1, so for CPN, it goes pretty well. But then you may ask, good question. What if I like to study something like K3? Okay. Kalabiyao manifold. Anything. They have no vector fields, no holomorphic vector fields. What should I do? This construction would not work anymore. So I am losing geometrical construction. And uh, I, I will hesitate to say what's going on. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, why, why, why do they have no vector, no holomorphic vector fields? I'm, I'm just who, Calabria manifolds. Yeah, of course they have no holomorphic vector fields. Yeah. So why, why can, can you just imagine K three? Mm -hmm. What kind of holomorphic vector field could? Okay, consider the simplest uh, example, not K3, uh, complex dimension one. Consider even surface of uh, positive genera. No okay. holomorphic vector fields. I don't know, Taurus, Taurus has a holomorphic Taurus field. has. <laughs> With Taurus, we are lucky. Okay, GGG greater than, greater or equal than two. Okay. T Taurus on sphere is okay. So it's, so it's kind of a problem how to play in this case. What would be the geometric, so the geometrical way to play? So in some sense, in some sense, there are vector fields that are not holomorphic. And it would be interesting to understand 
if it is possible to deform it using non holomorphic vector fields. You see here to have x, x bar. Okay. But so is it is it hard to prove that they have no homomorphic vector fields? Is it is it obvious? Riemann surfaces. No, uh, Calabial, for example, or probably with some extra conditions, right? Uh, mm -hmm. for, for Riemann surfaces, it's it's clear. Yeah, we we know how to describe line bundles, but but. Well, 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 let me see. So uh, with the be holomorphic vector fields, the, uh, we can plug it in uh, in uh, the top form, and we will get some uh, strange cohomology. But yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So contract with the holomorphic top form. Okay. Okay. Huh. But. Uh, the question is, uh, we can uh, try to define, we, we can try to put here x and x bar, but I never studied this. You see? So together with uh, Nikrasov and uh, Frankel, we went into Bosoni case. We were trying to say, oh, let us kill fermions. And uh, by the way, it's not easy to kill fermions. So you see, this, this is super symmetric case. The, the question would be, what about bosonic sigma model? Could we define it? And we had some problems. So what, what we actually wanted to do would be, you know, if you have super symmetric theory, Okay, you define a theory using supersymmetric theory. Then you would like to give masses to fermions, and the rest would be the bosonic model. Okay, Andrei, I'm completely lost in what you are talking about. So, uh, so this all use for a CP one, so they they correspond to. Well, you're saying on one side, on one hand you said current algebra, so that means not just holomorphic vector fields on CP one because there are only three dimensional space of those. If you want current algebra, you need on 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 CP1 with two punctures on this time. You mean the target or the worksheet? The target. Uh, the, the target is CP1. But then you don't have enough, vector, enough holomorphic vector fields to have a current algebra. I don't understand. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, what do you mean? Uh, the, the, there are a lot of them. Sorry. You have three. You have three. three. Is, it an, is it enough to have a current algebra? Ah, okay, maybe it's enough. Of course, it's enough. It's it's, it's even more than enough. So why is it, why is it more than enough? Uh, because because when you say enough, it's a question. Uh, of course, it's a question. What is enough? And uh, okay, in the case of uh, WZW model, mm -hmm. the number of vectors equals to the dimension of the target space. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're, saying, so you're saying that this is something like SL2 uh, current algebra. So S uh, not, no, SL3 current algebra. SL2, SL2. Uh, okay, S, SL3 doesn't matter, yeah. SL3, mm -hmm. so, so, so there is such current algebra. And mm -hmm. moreover, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. It is exactly this current algebra that enters in the metric Eta. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it is a computation that I did last time, but important things should be uh, repeated several times. You see, I wrote this with something proportional to derivatives. Mm -hmm. it's, it, is a, it would be even better to put here not pi, Mm -hmm. But the following pi ui a of x plus fermions the same anti holomorphic 
a bar and put here eta a a bar now constant. Mm -hmm. And we might try to see, do we actually have in sigma model metric of this class? And the answer is yes. So, sorry, uh, what, what's going on? You you wrote your metric in terms of frame field, or? Mm -hmm. So let me recall that for CP1, and the same happens for CPM, of course, and for some other manifolds, the metric G is one over modulo X square, square, right? So it's metric with the lower indices. The metric with the upper indices is one plus x square squared. So you may enjoy it in the following form. Okay. So you see that here you have something like u1 u1 bar plus 2 u2 u2 bar plus u3 u3 bar where u1 u2 and u3 correspond to su2 of vector fields. So actually, you may play interesting game. You may put here alpha, beta, and gamma. And consider metric of this particular form. And you may study, in the case of CP1, the family of metrics. In particular, <clears throat> for alpha, beta, and gamma equal to one, mm -hmm. this metric has a curvature and has not trivial beta function. So at the moment, at the moment, I speak only about instantonic number zero. So beta function. Sorry, Andrei, I'm completely lost. Uh, okay. What are you doing? What, what, what is this formula? What is this about? <laughs> I'm, I'm writing the metric. Uh, so I understand the metric on, on CP1, but uh, I don't understand this formula, the, the last one. What, what are you one used to do? Yes. Okay. Metric is one, one by vector. Yes. Okay. So being one, one by vector, it could be expressed in terms of holomorphic vector fields and anti-holomorphic vector fields. Okay. So there is U1 that is d over dx, u2, that is x d over dx, u3, that is x squared d over dx. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also u1 bar, everything complex conjugated. Yes. Then the question is, how to get a round metric? Mm -hmm. What is, you may ask, what is the round metric on CP1? Mm -hmm. It is this. 
Yes, yes, yes. It is this by vector with one uh, instead of each of these three terms. Mm -hmm. And uh, you may see that uh, this is just uh, the, so if you identify two SU2s, that this is uh, a uh, killing form. Mm -hmm. You actually have two SU2s, SU2 of holomorphic vector fields and SU2 of anti-holomorphic vector fields. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So uh, the round metric is a metric when you have uh, Keeling form. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Now we can study different metrics, putting alpha, beta, and gamma here. Mm -hmm. So, okay, alpha is an overall. So here is some coefficient and here is some coefficient. Mm -hmm. In particular, if the only coefficient is in front of x, x bar, you will definitely have a flat metric. It would be a flat singular metric. However, it would be a regular uh, by vector. Because it will come from, from the system. What, what's it? What's it? So, so this is a by vector, a, a regular by vector. Uh, sorry, you said that, Something will be a flat metric. Well, what would be? Oh, so, so, so this x, x star, once again, you see, x, x star, d over dx tensor, d over dx bar. So this is a by vector. One, one by vector. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then it's interesting to see that uh, that such observable so okay, I elaborate this. Let me consider observable. I mean, did you say that some metric in this family is flat or something? Yes. And what values of alpha, beta, gamma? It's uh, zero, one, zero. Uh, alpha zero, gamma zero, beta one. Mm. So here, here is this observable. So it corresponds to the by vector of the form like this. And if you consider OPE, of this thing with itself, <laughs> it is regular, no poles. Because U2 commutes with itself. It's clear. U2 commutes with itself. Mm -hmm. And what's once again, this OPE is actually a curvature. And having this by vector, of course you have a flat metric. Okay, so metric corresponding to this by vector is dx over x times dx bar over x bar. Mm -hmm. 
Of course it's flat. All right? So being a metric, it is singular. However, it's what's important here that it's not metric that enters the action. It's in where it's inverse metric or by vector that enters the action. How do you see that it's flat? Sorry. How do I see that it's flat? Yes. D log x. Yes. D log x bar. Yes. And so with coordinate log. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you are constant in some coordinates, uh, for yes. sure you are flat. Mm -hmm. However, as a metric, it is singular. Yeah. But what's important is that uh, it's not the metric that enters the action. Mm -hmm. So, so here is so here we come uh, here we are coming to a conceptual misunderstanding that, that, that there is in the literature. We know in the literature that uh, action of the sigma model is written in terms of metric. Okay. However, uh, the idea is that from the point of view of instantonic theory, it is a misconception. The actual uh, coupling constant, the actual deformation is a by vector, not a metric. In particular, we can even put it to zero. Still, we have a theory. And this is already a conformal theory. If we put this, if we consider this metric, then epsilon deformation makes a theory being not conform. The theory has a beta function because of the curvature. And uh, there is an exercise that I never did. Put here alpha, beta, gamma. Compute OPE. And find that OPE is a curvature. But, but this is actually an exercise. I never checked, but I am 100% sure that it works. Mm -hmm. There is also a subtlety. I was so brave writing it in the instantonic sector zero. And if you ask me, is it possible that uh, there are instantonic corrections to these OPEs? I would say, oh, we have not studied that. Mm -hmm. And this is interesting. It should be very interesting to study instantonic corrections to everything. Already instantonic corrections one. Mm -hmm. It is, it is something non-trivial. And we with uh, Frankel and Nikrasov somehow missed this opportunity to do it. And this would be actual instantonic deformation of uh, of the RAM and uh, its differentiations and everything. Mm -hmm. Missed, we missed it. 
Okay, so it's quantum DRAM complex. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <coughs> so quantum DRAM, <coughs> quantum <coughs> differentiations. Mm -hmm. So you see, whenever you deform the RAM, of course, you, de you deform differentiation. So here you have a here. Uh, sorry. So if you consider this evaluation, zero, no, it's not. Zero. And this thing has a definition. So what's important is that this has a definition. So if you compare it with the standard approaches to Sigma model, they are terrible. You know what people do? do. So Kolya perhaps knows this because he had to study Palchinsky mm -hmm. in his early youth. And it was terrible. Because, because when you... Uh, I, I know it because I, I went through this. So you have a sigma model, but you need to compute something. You need to pick up some coordinates, write in these coordinates, how do you know that nothing depends on the choice of coordinates? You don't really know it. And then you have different interactions and divergences. <coughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> so it becomes a mess. <coughs> but in this way, it's not a mess. It's kind of a regular procedure. So what, what kind of uh, observables we have? So so far we have these uh, observables all uh, labeled by forms. And there yes, are also all tilde. Observables, observables related to vector fields. And then, so O and O tilde, O by to forms yes, and O tilde vector fields. Yes, and you also can have an OPEs. So you can have these O tildes and you can also take O corresponding to functions and you can uh, multiply it. <coughs> when I say multiply, of course I mean do it <coughs> in quantum field theory way. Take observable corresponding to function, observable corresponding to vector field and turn the one to the two. So all multiplications should be motivated by conformal field theory. Mm -hmm. And also in Stantonic corrected. So this is quantum, uh, so this, this should be the story of quantum uh, DRAM for CP1, for CPL. Completely missed. And you can so uh, what uh, if you take OPE between O and O tilde, it gives you what some kind of substitution of vector field into the differential form. Uh, no, if you take it's a it's, it's a good point. Let me tell you what what I would expect. Okay, but Corey, you you are making a good point. So what would I expect if I have PU plus fermions? And, uh, and I have function of X. Okay, here no fermions. Ah, okay, okay, so lead derivative. No, I mean, lead yes. derivative of that of a form. Yes, exactly. So and here I have this pole. So just to, I'm just thinking how to reproduce all the usual DRAM operations. So how can you take? And, and, and then, and then, then there are, there are other interesting issues here. So this is Lie derivative, but you would also like to define 
the contraction <coughs> of the differential form with a vector field. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I definitely remember that it is still possible to do it using these def lambda deformed things. However, uh, I'm always forgetting this. It is written somewhere. So I mean, that there is also another operator, O2 tilde U, that goes as uh, pi, okay? So this one should be a contraction of the differential form with a vector field U. Look, consider this all two tildes and consider all omega. Omega of X psi and some number of psi, okay? You have this contraction mm -hmm. and you contract U with a differential form. So it means that you are deforming the action by something like this. So, so this is also doable. Just at a moment, I forgot how to interpret this. So if you have lambda here, you interpret this as a deformation of this equation. And if you have lambda tilde, you, you also have some kind of interpretation. However, I forgot how to, how to do it. Well, okay, well lambda tilde is a fermion, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's a, there's also a fermionic equation. Of yes, and uh, as far as I remember, you do it this way. So you have uh, this equation that is lambda deformed. So when you take derivative with respect to lambda, uh, you get the differentiation. However, if you take not derivative, but something like contraction with the vector, then uh, you get this pi. You see, I don't quite remember, I'm sorry. I did it several times, but I always forget. But uh, I th like you answered the question, oh, what do you mean, what did you forget? forget? The question is, uh, what is lambda deformation? So naively, I thought that lambda deformation is a deformation by a parameter by a parameter lambda. Mm -hmm. Now I remember that it's better to do it this way. 
consider super deformation like this. Put lambda here and the lambda here. Then, then you will have this deformed space, and on the end on deformed space you you will have differential forms in lambda, not just functions. So if you contract with the vector field d over d lambda, you will get these correlators of O2, of O2 tilde. Yes, it's like this. I don't know, maybe it's better to write it lambda tilde and say that there is differential that takes lambda to lambda tilde. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it's a general rule. You always have the RAM. So it's A model. You always have the RAM, the RAM of everything. When you deform, you should have, the, you should have of course, uh, the RAM on the space of deformations. So in this way, you can have this O, o to O to tildes. And I have no idea what are the instantonic corrections to this algebra. And not only I have no idea, I think that nobody has any idea. So this is, uh, uh, this, this thing should be called the, uh, Quantum uh, uh, quantum Durham algebra with quantum in sense with instantonic corrections. Nobody studied it. Is it uh, sorry? Uh, yeah, um, it you can have more of me now. Sorry. So the, this is really just. The RAM. There are no other operations besides what you encounter in the RAM. The RAM. Like if you start taking OPE of all these things, can't you get some other stuff then? Mm. Okay. Things should be natural. So we, before instantonic corrections, you may convince yourself that uh, the zero instantonic sector. You have just the wrong. <laughs> so, so it seems like if you somewhere in between this and the usual A model where you, you look at cuboid homology, there's this holomorphic twist when you look at Q bar plus cohomology, where you get uh, just just some vertex algebra, and already in that case, instantonic corrections are really hard so in this full-blown theory they're like that must be even harder but they're explicit so everything is explicit you it's easy to so you can just sit down and compute you see you just do not need to invent something everything is already invented you just need to write, uh, read out the result. Um, mm -hmm. So we actually were doing something like this with Slizovsky uh, many years ago. But we have not succeeded. Maybe we, we were not working hard enough. That was one dimensional model. Uh, it's, we, we did two dimensional model. Ah, OK. Formulas are simple. I mean, procedure, procedure is doable. There could be some surprises. So, so what's the procedure for instance? 
procedure procedure for instantons once again is the following you have the instantons page then you take lambda deformation of instantons page then you Okay, so so to be clear, just so uh, this by this we just mean solutions to del bar x equals lambda delta function. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. just solutions, mm-hmm. and, and it's not a problem to find this solution explicitly. It's not that you need to invent something. For the case of say CPN models, you can write down explicit formulas. Mm-hmm. And that's good to have explicit formulas. The r- rational functions or, or, or what? Uh, like, uh, yes, rational functions. Mm-hmm. So what could be more explicit than formula Z minus A, Z minus B plus lambda one over Z minus Y in particular. Mm-hmm. Actually, back to Coles, all, all the question. So, th- does this deformation not break the instanton number? So, aren't we deforming something of instanton number oh, zero? Of course, of course, they don't break instanton numbers. Why? Because instanton numbers is the degree of the map. It's one. It's number of zero, zero and four. So, this lambda is infinitesimal. Can you write down the finite lambda deformation? So based on the analogy with the one dimensional case, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. But it would not be a holomorphic map. You see? Oh, oh, all right. So, so, So this lambda deformation are not holomorphic maps. Mm-hmm. However, uh, well, so what does it do? Has it cut somewhere? Or? Morphic maps, you still have uh, the topological sector of the map. Mm-hmm. Moreover, I was I would say that it is easy to check that this theory has an geomentum tensor. And uh, there is a definition. Here, uh, definition is as follows. Sorry. So in this equation, you state that the first term is a holomorphic map from CP1 to CP1. Yes. And this, and here we have uh, its deformation. It's not holomorphic. And uh, if you have some function, there are, there are many ways to split it into a holomorphic and non-holomorphic part. Oh, it's uh, so you 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 can always try to solve this equation. At least this equation. Here is omega bar. So omega bar belongs to zero one. You can always study solution to this equation. Mm-hmm. Of course, this is non holomorphic map. But we just don't care because it's not holomorphic. What's the vector field in this case? U of X mm-hmm. depends, uh, it depends what, what do you want for no, for that deformation, for that particular one. So, uh, so actually, so I know how to do it with holomorphic vector field. And uh, you may ask, and I don't, I have not studied this. 
we may try to write down x x bar. What would this mean? No, just asking in this formula above for this particular lambda deformation. C is in z, blah, blah, blah. with deforming by lambda over z minus y. I think it's constant. It's constant in coordinate x. Okay. Mm -hmm. x equals c z minus a z minus b. Mm -hmm. So d bar x comes not from this. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it comes from this. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the here's an instant on what's the prescription how to uh include it from lambda and set lambda to zero and then you get some correlator, right? Exactly. So in order to get result, you see, so it's, okay, X lambda, okay. And there is of course, uh, Psi lambda. So you, you take uh, derivative with respect to parameter, parameter. dc, z minus a, z minus b of, okay, yes, plus c, da minus z minus b, yes, plus c, z minus a, z minus b square db, okay. And there is also lambda, I'm sorry. So you are taking the RAM on the space of parameters and uh, wh why this is called Psi lambda? Because, because Psi, uh, because it's, it's how you are doing evaluation. Mm -hmm. Because this is DX. Mm -hmm. So you take this. Then you have a function of x and psi. You plug it in, you have a differential form. <laughs> I call it omega. You plug it here, you have a differential form on the space of uh, parameters you evaluate at some point z1. Should you have a dy term also or not? No dy, y is fixed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's something. Then you try to integrate and uh, there could be surprises. Surprises could be if there are some divergences. In the instantonic modular space integration. Wait, wait, wait. so. Uh... So. <clears throat> Sorry. So you you. Um, so what did you just describe? The there's. Um, I'm describing the correlator, the explicit formula for correlator. Correlator of o, o, o omega, but then there are also other observ observables. O tilde. U at y, and say O omega. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I plug everything 
which is d over d lambda, at lambda equal to zero, of the following thing. I take omega of x lambda psi lambda and integrate it over the modular space. All right, yeah. So well, the first one does the deformation and, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I have here two omegas, omega one, z one, or omega two, mm -hmm. z two, this typically is a general thing. Mm -hmm. Z1, Z2. So that's it. <coughs> so, uh, and which modular space? Well, what, uh, this model is modular space parameterized by CAB. Mm -hmm. CQ. Mm -hmm. Roughly speaking. Well, when there were no instantons, then there were no no integral at all. There was an integral of a c. No, but that's one instanton. It's, it's zero instanton. Mm -hmm. So no instantons means that here we have a constant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I say when ah, uh, I see. Okay. So no instanton. It will it will be integral of a c. Mm -hmm. Actually, CP1, so pro properly normalized. So, no instanton, it's a variation of the constant map. Constant map plus some lambda. But we also have, have this term, right? I mean, we just wrote. We just wrote the term corresponding to this charge one, instantaneous charge one, but there should be also a term corresponding to the charge zero, no? Yes, yes, of course. Uh -huh. so, 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 so this is, of course, this is, of course, uh, coefficient. This is something plus, mm -hmm. this is in front of Q. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there will be nothing surprising here. Okay. But what will happen here, nobody knows. Well, what nobody knows? Ah, uh, next one. Yes. Uh, uh, this correlator, instantonic correction to this, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So this is the instantonic correct correction to so-called curved beta gamma. Mm -hmm. But this is more than curved beta gamma, right? It is curved beta gamma BC. But I, I think it's even more than that. Right? What do you mean more? Uh, more. Plus, plus anti-holomorphic, of course. Plus, yeah. uh, and it's important to have anti-holomorphic because Otherwise, you see, would it have only chiral things you could not integrate? So by BC, you mean P pi psi? You see, it, it's, it's not my terminology. I hate it. So, uh, so actual field content is written here. Mm -hmm. Pi so, x. So beta gamma, beta gamma is P, P del bar x. And BC yeah. plus is, is pi del bar psi, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have you should have both. Otherwise, you cannot integrate. Mm -hmm. See, when you want to integrate, you cannot integrate holomorphic form. No, yeah, you, you don't have Q without without fermions. 
No, not only without fermions, you you should have real something here. Mm -hmm. You cannot integrate a holomorphic form. You should no. integrate uh, uh, the form uh, uh, that has both holomorphic and anti-holomorphic differential. Well, you can integrate it over a cycle. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, however, here, here, here it's clear how to integrate this. And uh, if you think about integration of a recycle, mm, I don't know how to do it. How can you integrate over CP1? There are no cycles in CP1. Uh, mm -hmm. Would it be not CP1 uh, or CPN target? You may think about integration over a cycle. However, if target is CPM, there are there are cycles, but but there is CP smaller. No, okay. Well, consider CP one. What would we mean to integrate over a cycle? So consider X and Psi. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, gives you differential form in DC, dA, dB. What would we mean to integrate it over a cycle? Well, uh, you, you well. I guess in the pure in the pure beta gamma system you don't have these observables o o omega, so this you have the analog of o tilde but not o omega. You have o omega for holomorphic omega. However, you need well. However, you don't have integrable holomorphic. Yes, in some sense you are right. So if you can, if you try to do it chiral in the chiral way, uh, you'll have problems. You see, it, it, it's a question: how to integrate over CP one? If you would like, so CP one, of course, is a holomorphic uh, manifold, right? You may try to develop the theory of integration of holomorphic forms over CP one. It's it's kind of problematic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all all I was referring to is that the beta gamma system still makes sense in some way. Just that this object doesn't. You see, then you was, uh, then the question is so okay. The target is CP one. What is the holomorphic function? There are no holomorphic functions on CP1. Mm -hmm. You only have smooth functions on CP1. Or you have meromorphic function. Okay. But if you have meromorphic functions, then, uh, then you immediately run into problems. Because meromorphic functions, uh, it's not clear how to evaluate them. Of the pole. But that's why you cannot do with CP1. You cannot do with, you, you can do only with C. Mm. Okay. But CP1, CP1. So you see how many things are still not studied already in uh, in simplest models. And of course, this is a warm up to go to higher dimensions. Because there will be two higher dimensional sto story. One higher dimensional story is instantons in uh, Young Mills, and another higher dimensional story is the holomorphic maps of uh, toric surface surfaces. However, I think now, now we may say that 
we discuss something, Pasha. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we discuss something. I hope it became. more clear what's going on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and nobody computed this by the way mm -hmm. let me tell you something uh, that we we also found so you can, can you, sorry, sorry. <coughs> two, two minutes recess. Okay, I'm sorry, can you have two minutes recess? I'm sorry. Just yes, let's make hey. two minutes break. No Uh, hi. Uh, yes. uh -huh. so, uh, let me make uh, several comments. Mm -hmm. uh, this theory automatically has uh, energy momentum tensor. Mm -hmm. And this energy momentum tensor is coming uh, from the following uh, consideration. Once again, you have this, the main equation. Let me consider no uh, vector fields, no lambda deformation. Mm -hmm. You may consider it in different complex structure. Mm -hmm. So the space M, of instantons now hiddenly depends on mu. Solution to this equation. Mm -hmm. So the variation with respect to mu is exactly energy momentum tensor. Mm -hmm. So it has it. So similarly, similarly. You have super partner of energy momentum tensor. Because you consider everything as differential forms on the space of mu. Like you consider differential forms uh, on the space of lambda. So model has energy momentum tensor. 
And then there is a question. Model has a current algebra. Is it possible to write down energy momentum tensor in terms of the current algebra? Mm. So in the beta gamma system, we thought that we understand something. That this is energy momentum tensor plus Fermi. Mm -hmm. But uh, can we say something uh, in a more invariant way? What does it mean? Does it mean that we take any vector field? So that there is no xi. What does it mean? Take any vector field and write down this. So I don't know how to interpret, how to understand this formula. Mm -hmm. So you see, here are a lot of observables. And, and having a lot of observables, it's interesting to see if energy momentum tensor comes out of this, uh, comes out of these observables. Mm -hmm. It's not clear. And once again, it's not clear if there are Instant only corrections. Um. You see, there, 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 there could be instant or should be instant only corrections to everything. Mm -hmm. And this issue may be important uh, if we would like to understand mirror symmetry. But we will come to it later on. But before studying mirror symmetry, it's better to have a look on what is going on. What, what, when, you, when you define this correlator in the bottom, why do you have to put a lambda to zero? Because I'd like to put uh, y lambda to zero. I, I can have lambda non-zero. However, uh, what is what would be a meaning of it? It would be deformed instantons. Okay, maybe it's also possible to consider lambda deformed instantons. Well, I guess, so what's, what's the goal? What do you want to consider? I, so my goal is to consider local observable. In... So I'm, I'm trying to find out a theory with local observables. If I will keep lambda, I will break diff invariance here in, in a strange way. Yeah, the, the toy model for this was in in in, in and they talk in uh, in one one DMP x dot theory where you want to represent p observable as uh, from the deformation from taking the derivative of a deformation, but you you don't want this deformation to still survive in the action, so you want to put lambda to zero. Yes, I I actually would like to put lambda to zero. Sorry, what do you mean? Want to survive? Want to survive? Well, you are you are. Uh, so first, you consider only x observables, but then you want to somehow have a p observable. And mm -hmm. Andre's way to do it was to add lambda time times p at some point to the action, mm -hmm. and then take the derivative in lambda and set lambda to zero. Yes. And uh, if you don't set lambda to if you do set lambda to zero, that's just the same as taking the cor correlator 
in px dot theory. If you don't set lambda to zero, that's taking the correlator in not in yeah, px dot theory, but in a different one which doesn't have different variance. Yes. So that's it. Mm -hmm. All right. And, uh, and let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not only about the OPE. So having this, uh, one may think, is it possible to construct uh, the Hilbert space in this model using these currents? Mm -hmm. And maybe solve theory on higher gender, cut things into pieces and glue them. Mm -hmm. However, it's a special issue. Mm -hmm. Maybe we will discuss it sometime. Mm -hmm. But uh, today's talk was about uh, what, what is a model in some detail, okay? So epsilon is not a part of a model, right? It's not a part of a model. Mm -hmm. So however, you can study this epsilon deformation. Epsilon but, it is very, but it is very complicated or at least order by order it's maybe not that complicated. Oh, you see, you can do it order by order. Mm -hmm. And uh, the answer was, would, of course, depend on epsilon. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, if you do not consider only closed observables, mm -hmm. of course, the uh, result would, be, would depend on epsilon. So it's kind of instructive and doable to do it order by order. Mm -hmm. Okay. In some cases. Yeah. You will get beta function. Mm -hmm. You will get a massive theory. All right, yeah. By the way, there is well-known string theory amplitudes. They, they depend on alpha prime, mm -hmm. OK? And what people were not doing properly uh, is alpha prime expansion. Mm -hmm. Take this famous amplitudes and consider alpha prime expansion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Formulas are available. Meaning is not that clear. Mm -hmm. So I always advocate alpha prime expansion. And here it's doable. Okay, I think it's enough for today. Mm -hmm. but, by the way, in the case of just the, the beta gamma system with CP1, uh, like all these questions. Purely bosonic is anomalous. Huh? Purely bosonic beta gamma system on CP1 is anomalous. Well, Well, th there is this ch chiral differential operators, right? Or chiral Dirac complex. Well, okay, that's something you have yeah. to ask. For 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 C, you 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 can have it for C. You can have it for CP one. Okay, you may. Okay. And then, at least if if you ignore instantons, perturbatively you get uh, SU two at level. What? There's some current algebra of uh, of uh, global sections, um, and then you can make sense of this stress energy tensor as well. In that case, like... so first of all, we should not ignore instantons because it's important to have these instantons. Yes. 
then uh, there is of course a question uh, where do we actually need this curved beta gamma system alone i know only one place where you may think it is needed namely it's berkowitz string well also if you want to study the uh the chiral algebra in the zero comma two models like when you study the uh, zero comma two two dimensional zero comma two okay um but yeah in that case it's known that instantons destroy everything in that particular model like cv1 okay so now it's actually a bit late mm -hmm. in Moscow. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me stop the recording. Yes. Mm -hmm.